It was the 8th of June, bottom of the ninth, two outs, and with one swing of the bat, Warren Morris gave Skip Bertman's Tigers one of the greatest and perhaps the most dramatic victory in the history of LSU sports. Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Schneider. You know, many Tiger fans admit they left their television sets early that Saturday afternoon with the Miami Hurricanes holding a 7-3 lead. But even those who watched every pitch have called to say they wanted to see it again, calling it the best college baseball game of all time. So it is with great pride that we at WAFB take the next three hours to present the commercial-free rebroadcast of the 50th anniversary championship game of the College World Series. The Tigers of LSU have been a regular visitor to the title game of the 90s, winning in 1991 and in 93. This year's Tiger squad packs a powerful punch, which has produced an SEC record 130 home runs. It's Miami and LSU for the national championship. CBS Sports welcomes you to the College World Series and Rosenblatt Stadium in Omaha, Nebraska, where once again this year, attendance records have been set at the College World Series. Ordinarily, you can't tell the players without a program, but perhaps this year you can at the 50th College World Series as two familiar teams vie for the national championship. It's the Miami Hurricanes taking on the Fighting Tigers of LSU. It's a perfect day for baseball here in America's heartland. 72 degrees as we approach the first pitch. The breeze out of the north at 13 miles per hour. That could be a factor as the wind is blowing in from left field. This is ordinarily a hitter's ballpark. And the LSU Tigers just now taking the field. They've struggled defensively in the College World Series. Ten errors in three games, nine of them in the first two games. But they are 3-0 here. They have Chad Cooley in left field, Mike Kerner in center field, Justin Bowles in right. Nathan Dunn with a team-high 20 errors at third base. Jason Williams has made three errors here at the College World Series at short. Warren Morris at second base. Eddie Furness at first. And Tim Lanier is the battery mate of today's starting pitcher for LSU, making the most important start of his life to this point. Junior Kevin Ship from Pride, Louisiana. Well, Sean, Kevin Ship is a six foot, 190 pounder who today has uh, two things to accomplish. Number one, he's got to get his curveball over. He's got to keep Miami off stride. And number two, he's got to get the ball down. This Miami team can crush the ball. And if he keeps that breaking ball up, it's going to be a long day for the Tigers. Ordinarily a starter, but here at the College World Series, he's been used twice in relief. And he has two saves to his credit here. We mentioned this is a cozy ballpark, ordinarily hitter friendly, but with the breeze blowing in today, that might not be the case. 332 down the lines, 360 to the power alleys, and 408 to straightaway center field, where the wall is 10 feet high. It's only seven feet high in left and right. There are rules differences between college baseball and the way the game is played professionally here at the College World Series. Aluminum bats are allowed. Players must wear helmets with two ear flaps. Roll blocks are not allowed. And the use of tobacco products is prohibited. And the umpires working this game. Scott Graham has the balls and strikes with Randy Crystal at first. Tom McKinney at second. Tony Thompson at third. Kevin Gilmore is along the left field line. And Bob Jones is on the right field line. Ready to go, and Ryan Grimmett digs in to get the national championship game started. Grimmett at 310, three homers, 34 runs batted in. And Kevin Ship's first pitch is a breaking ball high for ball one. strikes ships fastball 86 to 90 miles an hour according to Kevin he's a quick worker as you can tell that looked like a pretty good pitch fastball called ball three John two things to note early in this game number one a lot of tension in this championship game 
This game is going to be played on emotion. The first three innings will be like a prize fight, each team feeling each other out. The pitchers getting settled on the mound. And right off the bat, Kevin Ship walks Grimmett, the first hitter for Miami. LSU can't afford to get behind early. J.D. Arteaga, the pitcher for Miami, has been known to step right in there and throw strikes. He's 12 and 1. Grimmett, that first base after the four pitch walk. I think Ship is still wondering what was wrong with the last two pitches he threw to Grimmett. Breaking ball outside, that's five balls in a row as Rudy Gomez looked at ball one. Usually the strike zone starts out small and will expand depending on how good the pitcher throws within the strike zone. Ship, as you saw during the numbers that were posted on your screen, ordinarily around the strike zone, has good control. You mentioned he says his fastball 86 generally. He has an overhand curveball, which he says he'll throw at any time in the count for strikes. And he throws a circle change only about 15 times a game. The hit and run is on. It's shot down to first. Harris to ship for the out. And on the play, Grimmett moves to second base. And that's the Miami philosophy. Jim Morris likes to be aggressive, and why not? His team 3-0 in this College World Series to put the pressure on the opposition each game. And even when they don't hit for power, they get them going just like this. Grimmett's off. And Gomez tries to hit to the right side. A good play there, but they advance the runner. Grimmett at second and one out. No score, just underway. In the top of the first. And Burrow bounces one through the left side. A base hit in the left. Grimmett slowed to see if the third baseman Dunn could handle it. He advances to third. And Pat Burl, the nation's leading hitter, on his way to becoming the first freshman to lead the nation in hitting, has a hit on his first swing in this game. Nathan Dunn, Nathan Dunn, who has had trouble defensively, just doesn't get a good break on this ball. Seemed to be a little tentative. A little slow getting to that big hopper. Now watch him. See, he breaks a little bit to his right. Now can't get to the ball. Runners on first and third for Miami. One out. And the batter is the right fielder, Eddie Rivero. He goes up there hacking at the first pitch and bounced it into his dugout where all of his teammates are up on the top step. Rivero hitting 364 for the season with eight homers and 53 runs batted in. You can see the attitude of this Miami team. They're going up swinging from that first pitch. We know that Chip is ordinarily around the plate throws strikes and gets ahead of hitters John almost seems to be a killer instinct by Miami at this point they definitely were a confident team as we spoke with them yesterday they have more or less breezed through the first three games of this college world series they've outscored their opponents by a combined 36 to 9 First classic confrontation in this game between pitcher and batter. Ship falls behind two and one. It's the wrong guy to get behind to. And he misses high. Now it's three and one on Rivera. With that base hit, by the way, Burl is now hitting 492. Not only is he leading the nation in hitting, but he's pulling away from the rest of the pack. Ethan Barlow of Vermont is second. He's at 455. So Earl is almost 40 points better now, 37 points ahead of any other hitter in the country this year as a freshman. The ship came back with a good breaking ball down that time. He's had two problems so far this inning. A breaking ball that's up and not in there for a strike. Now at three and two, he's got to come in. And we'll see if Earl with good speed runs from first. Step toward third and a look toward first. Earl, as you saw, can steal the base, has eight, has been thrown out three times. Ship in a jam here in the first inning. First and third and one out, no score. 
3 2 with the runner not going. Bounce down to first. And Johnny Rodriguez, first base coach. And Jim Morris, the head coach, doubles as third base coach. Morris not having Burl go that time. Nor is he going on this pitch, and it's ball four just inside. So two walks in the inning thrown by Kevin Ship. And that has to be cause for concern for Skip Bertman, the 13th year head coach at LSU. We watched Ship walk only 29 batters this year in 80 innings, but he's walked two here in the first, and the bases are loaded. Skip Bertman, also the head coach for the Olympic team. This is exactly what he didn't want. A wild starting pitcher. Now with bases loaded, one out. Miami's the kind of team that can break it open with one swing. Michael DeSell hoping to take that swing. Took strike one. Ball travels much better to right field here, even though the, the wind's crossing from left to right. Lanier set up low and away, and that's where Ship missed. One ball, one strike on DeSell. He's a junior from Citrus Heights, California. This first inning putting a lot of pressure on the LSU defense. Foul to the plate. One and two. On DeSell, he's had a good College World Series. He's five for 11 in the three Miami victories. Has driven in four runs. The one-two pitch. Bounced in the hole. Big hit right field. Driven has scored. Gomez is being waved around the throw from Bowles. Misplayed by Lanier. Two run score on the play. DeSell with a base hit and two runs batted in, thrown out trying to make it to second base. Look at this curveball in a good location, but he just hits it through the right side. And this will score two runs to put Miami ahead two to nothing. Now we see a one hopper at home that can't be fielded. But Lanier picks it up and guns it to second for the out. He's out 9-2-6, a bunt foul by T.R. Marcinczyk down to Coach Morris. Let's take a look at this throw. It's there in time. Oh, he seems to have the foot in, and the second baseman tags him high. Isn't that typical, though, if the ball beats the runner? Mm -hmm. Invariably, the umpire calls him out. I thought he was safe. Great start for Miami. Two runs on two hits and two walks. Good downward movement on that pitch from Ship. And Marcinczyk swung over the top of it. The only base runner now, Eddie Rivero at third, with two down. Marcinczyk, the leading RBI man on the Miami team this year with 69. Great fastball for strike three. First strikeout for Ship, but he had a rocky first inning as Miami scored twice. After a half inning in Omaha, 2 nothing Canes. Skip Bertman is LSU's all-time winningest coach. Today he's looking for his third national title. And here is his lineup. Jason Williams leads off and plays shortstop. Mike Kerner is the center fielder. Nathan Dunn is at third base. Eddie Furness, the SEC Player of the Year, is the cleanup hitter and first baseman. Chad Cooley in left field. Brad Wilson is the DH batting sixth. Batting seventh and playing right field, Justin Bowles. Tim Lanier is the captain and catcher. And the number nine hitter, second baseman, Warren Morris. And it's selected this year. And Honor of the 50th anniversary of the College World Series. First pitch of the second, a strike thrown by Kevin Ship to Alex Cora. At 297, he's the only Miami starter below 300. And he has smashed down the first, caught by Curtis. Wow, what a bull at that time. He took a tight little slider and just hit a slap shot to Furnace. 
Alex has hit very well lately. You know you have a pretty good hitting team when you only have one guy under 300 and he's hitting 297. On the edge. Miami has shattered its school record for team batting average this year. They're hitting 342 as a team. First ball swinging Rick Sagisi with a pop-up and foul ground on third out of play. Sagisi is the DH, a redshirt freshman, hitting 337 with excellent power, 14 homers, and 51 runs batted in. Two of those home runs here at the College World Series. Off-speed pitch, line to left to hit. Chad Cooley over to cut it off. And Sagisi has a base hit. Ship still throwing the ball up that time, hanging what seemed to be a changeup. And Sagisi just taking it and hitting it where it's pitched. Let's take a look at this. It is just a changeup up. That's exactly where he doesn't want it. And he gets hurt. Three hits now for Miami, all of them singles. They scored two runs on two hits and two walks in the first. And now Sagisti's at first. With a one out in the second for the number nine hitter, the catcher, Jim Gargiulo, batting 330. Gargiulo with a little bit of pop, eight home runs this year. Good RBI man in that ninth spot. And don't be surprised if Miami puts on a hit and run. Drulo turned a bunt and took a ball. I guess it also says a lot about your team when your number nine hitter is hitting 330 with 57 <laughs> runs batted in in 62 games. Certain comfort <laughs> the head coach has. <laughs> Miami is at 342 as a team. They average nine runs a game. They had 91 homers in 63 games this year. And they've stolen 109 bases in 63 games. Other than that, they're not much of an offensive threat. <laughs> what balance, though, between power and the ability to hit line drives and to move the runners? 2-0, a borderline strike. Two balls, one strike. Two and one, a good count for Jim Morris here to make something happen. I think Jim Morris is happy to see that flag we just saw. Both coaches talked yesterday about the major difference in this park between when the wind is blowing in and when it's blowing out. Dip Bertman has a more powerful lineup in terms of home run power, and they've been frustrated this week about balls being knocked down at the wall by the wind blowing in. They had a first game that was just great. Lanier, a couple of home runs, and after that, the power is shorted. Now ship behind three and one. There's a foul ball off the end of the bat. Three and two with one out. And we'll see if Sagisi is on the move. He does not have a stolen base this year. Not much of a base runner. Well, I guess he's due. Jim Morris played a conservatively last inning with first and third. One out in a three and two count. And a better base runner at first. Burrell, he did not have him going. This time. Sagisi does run, and it's a pop-up, and Warren Morris has it. Two down, the runner back to first. Sagisi aboard in the second. Miami leads two to nothing. Kevin Ships in his first year at LSU. He's a junior college transfer from Meridian. Community College in Mississippi. And he's facing the top of the order. Ryan Grimmett up for the second time in his many innings. He drops down a bunt. Dunn let it bounce foul. We mentioned a moment ago, every hitter in the lineup over 300 except Alex Cora, and he's been creeping up toward 300, now at 297, with an offensive surge in the postseason. The team average 342, setting the mark of 311, set by the Miami team of 1969. Cora 297, but key hits throughout the first three games. 
Grimmett lines it to center. Mike Kerner had trouble judging that ball as it was knocked down by the wind. And his lunging catch ends the inning. After an inning and a half of the College World Series, Miami leads 2-0. Welcome back to Omaha. I am standing outside of Rosenblatt Stadium, and, you know, this game today is sold out, but there are still plenty of people waiting to get general admission seats. Over here in this direction, you can see the end of the line. It curves all the way around this bend, and as you pan up the line, you can see there are probably at least 200, 220 people still waiting to get in with general admission seats, and some of them say they're prepared to wait out here all day long. Sean? Thanks, Michelle. Sean, that looks like the uh, queuing up line at Wimbledon right there. One of my favorite events. People standing outside waiting for somebody to give them a ticket to go in. Shows how popular this College World Series, not only this championship game, but the whole series is to people. It has grown, it seems, in popularity every year. Base hit on the first pitch of the third. Rudy Gomez lines a single in the center of Kevin Shipp. And Gomez is now one for two. He was out of the chopper down to first in the first. Shipp who settled down in the second inning comes back and just throws a ball. A little change right over the heart of the plate. Now Gomez along with the rest of his teammates they're going up to that plate swinging. Look at that line. A little hooking shot to left center. These are aggressive hitters. And here's the monster man now. Burl. Jim Morris said that he's never seen a young man hit the ball so hard time and time again. It was one for one today, now at 492. One missed by Ship and could put LSU in a serious jeopardy position, being four runs down. First ball swinging as he did in the first when he singled the left, wound up scoring one of the two Miami runs. One strike on Pat. He's from Boulder Creek, California. Miami won a recruiting battle with Cal State Fullerton, the defending national champion for Burl. Jim Morris was very honest yesterday. He said, I never even saw him play. Turtle Thomas recruited him out an all star game. And he's been much, much better than anyone could have expected, obviously, when you're a freshman leading the nation in hitting the first freshman in the history of college baseball to do that. You're doing it by almost 40 points. No one could have expected that. Sean, I've watched Burrow. When he makes a mistake, he tries to pull out too much. That front shoulder opens, the foot opens up. But you know what? He makes the adjustment. He doesn't make the same mistake twice. He's batting 492 to lead the nation. He has 23 home runs. 63 runs batted in. He's also walked 61 times. He's an honors student. 6'4", 220 pounds. Jim Morris said yesterday. Good-looking young man. Jim said, life isn't really fair. Seems like so much has been bestowed upon Pat Burrell. Some of the folks in the Miami administration, Rob Wilson, their outstanding baseball sports information director, refer to Burrell as Superman. When he came back from his grandfather's funeral last night, he said, well, Superman is back in town. There's a lot about the character of this young man. The runner goes on a 2-2 two -two at strike three. The throw not in time. Gomez has the stolen base, his 28th of the year. He's now the team leader by one. Even with Burrow at the plate, Jim Morris sends his team, being aggressive again. Lanier with a good arm. It's one hop to sit too late. Strikeout for Ship is his second of the ball game. One out, a runner at second. Two nothing Miami as the Canes bat on the top of the third. Eddie Rivero looked at ball one. Eddie walked to load the bases in the first. Was stranded at third. So just joining us, Miami scored twice in the first. Ryan Grimmett led off the game with a walk, moved to second on a ground up. Pat Burrell single to left, sending Grimmett to third. Then Rivero walked to load the bases, and Michael DeSell single to right, knocking in both runs. That's to right and dropping fast. Charging hard, Bowles makes the running catch. 
Williams was not back to tag on the shallow fly. He was a couple of steps off the bag, and he's still at second with two down. Miami, with this appearance in the College World Series, has been here 15 times. Only Texas, Oklahoma State, Southern Cal, and Arizona State have been to the College World Series more often. For LSU, this is appearance number eight. Ground ball, great diving stop by Morris. Now the throw to play with Gomez trying to score, and he is out. Morris saved the run with a great diving stop and his alert reaction to get back on his feet and throw to home as Gomez tried to score from second on that play. What a great stop by Morris. The good luck player for LSU and a strike to home. What a play. And that could be the spark LSU needs. They're down to nothing. Hot save number of last year's national champion team. Beating Cavillia the DH. 3-2 LSU. Miami trails for the first time in the postseason since their first game of the regional against Sam Houston State which was their only loss in postseason. They bounced back to win seven straight coming into this one. P.R. Marcinczyk, the leadoff batter for the Canes, and he's quickly in the hole 0-2. He struck out swinging against Kevin Shipp to end the first. Let's see if Shipp is inspired by that three-run rally that gives him the lead. He's calmed down after a tough first inning. And the breaking ball missed blowing away good curveball that time good 12 to 6 rotation very tough to hit seems to be much looser with his delivery Kevin told us yesterday didn't think he'd be nervous today he's pitched twice in relief in this college world series both in tight ball games he picked up saves in each of those appearances and he has also pitched in the past in the junior college world series when he was at Meridian Community College in Mississippi throws Marcinczyk straight in the back with the breaking ball. And that's three strikeouts in the ball game for Ship, two at the expense of Marcinczyk. Part of the part of the pitching plan by Ship is to get the curveball over, and this is a great one. He needs to keep Miami off balance. Oh, he gets Marcinczyk just that little jerk there. He just really fooled him. So important as a pitcher to hold off the opponents after your team has posted a big inning, as the Tigers just did to support ship. Alex Cora hit a wicked line drive that was caught by the first baseman, Furnace. Now he chops one in that direction. And Johnny Rodriguez. This game will be a game of emotion and a game of momentum shifts, and we've seen that already in the first three. speed at 79 miles per hour one and two on Cora mentioned earlier the younger brother of Joey says Joey wasn't that much of an influence as a young he was always away playing baseball there's a fair ball down the right field line Cora on his way for at least two as the ball's retrieved by Bowles it's a double and the Canes have the tying run at second with one out Alex Cora continues red hot now Six for 14 here at the College World Series. Cora takes this curveball slider inside, and he's been nice and smooth. See how he gets the hands out and the head of the bat, just hooks it down the line. And I thought he possibly could have gone for three, but he really started to cruise in the second about halfway down there, just assumed that he had a double. He's at second with one out for Rick Segisi, the DH. And the freshman takes a strike. Now, Ship's pattern has been to start off the left-handers with breaking balls. If you're watching this game as a hitter, you've got to wisen up to that. A little foul ball back to the screen, 0-2 on Sagisi. Alex Cora is second after the double, the sixth Miami hit. 
mentioned that Joey was off and off playing baseball while Alex was a youngster. Alex says back in Puerto Rico, Louis Aparicio, one of the all-time great shortstops, was a tremendous influence in Alex's development as a player. Chop down to first. Easy play for Furness. The third on the play, Cora, two down. The DC now one for two. Kevin Ship, the junior, missed about a month this season with tendonitis in his right shoulder. Problem that plagued him during his two seasons in junior college as well. Kind of preserves a one-run lead. Three to two LSU in the fourth, a runner at third and two outs, and ball one delivered to Jim Gargiulo. Cora bluffing well down the line as Ship missed low and away. 2-0, Gargiulo pops to second in the second. Cora trying to get a balk that time. Trying to see if Ship was watching him. Didn't work that time. Ship focused on the hitter with two outs. Almost got a piece of him that time. Now it's 3-0. And, oh. and the leadoff hitter, Ryan Grimmett, is on deck. the worn shoe right there <laughs> a ship that is springing a leak ball four four pitch walk to Gargiulo and that is the third thrown by ship the first since the first inning well, that's a piece of leather that you keep putting over a shoe and that's probably probably the third or fourth time this year that they put a piece of leather flapping over it Obviously, he loves those shoes. They're broken in, and they've got some pretty good luck for him. Tying run at third. Go ahead, run at first for Miami. The two outs in the fourth. Ryan Grimmett <laughs> takes a strike. Ryan let off the ball game with a four-pitch walk and scored the first run of the game. He lined to center in the second. Sean, I'm so impressed with these aluminum bats and how big the heads are. The hitting surface on these aluminum bats. No wonder the ball goes so far and they hit the ball so consistently. The Louisville TPX there. Favorite bat of Miami. Fouled to the screen. 0 and 2. Ron Grimmett, a junior from Cincinnati, Ohio. Nice catch by Kathy Weist. Member of the ground crew who has dazzled the fans here in Omaha over these 10 days. Her ability to play balls flawlessly off the screen. Kathy's a senior at the University of Nebraska, Omaha, in Lake Minnetonka, Minnesota. And there she is, basking in the glow of her latest catch. The big smile. Really sweet. Now, Grimmer with an open stand, ship pitching him away. See, when you have an open stance, it's tough to cover that outside part of the plate, and that's how they're working him. Let's see how close it is. It's a ball just off. And you're trying to frame it, as they say. Now the 2-2 to Grimmett. Chopped over the mound. And Williams gets the back to force Gargiulo in the inning. The Kane friend, too. They've left five men on. After three and a half, 3-2 Tigers. Ship back into the heart of the Miami order with Gomez Burrow and Rivero. Seems like every time he looks up, these guys are up at the plate. And Gomez has had a terrific year. Now at 416. But there's one for two today, a single and a stolen base in the third. But Jim Morris said yesterday, Rudy's performance this season has been overshadowed by all the attention given to Burrow. You can understand that attention and what Pat has done as a freshman. But Morris said yesterday there isn't another second baseman in the country he'd rather have than Rudy Gomez. He scored 85 runs this year, school record, and bidding to score another as he's aboard starting the inning with a base hit to right. Gomez is two for three. 
I like the way this Gomez hits the ball. A nice flat swing and rockets it to right. Good job. Today's national championship game will be followed by golf. The Buick Classic coming your way next here on CBS from Rye, New York. And play underway in the third round. Ernie Elves with a four-shot lead over four others in Westchester County, New York. Talk about good swings. That man oh, has boy. a beautiful one. He'd be a good low ball fastball <laughs> hitter, wouldn't he? He'd be good at just about anything. Quite an athletic background. Sean, one fact about recent college championship games. The starting pitcher that's gone the longest, invariably that team has won. So let's see if it holds true today. And an infield hit. It's his ball that was knocked down by Morris. Morris got up and threw Gomez out at the plate trying to score from second on what might be the biggest play of the ball game. Just so nice and quiet at the plate. I'd like to see this in a hitter. Slow feet, quick hands, they say, meaning a nice slow stride, good balance, and let those hands throw the head of the bat at the ball. Michael's a candidate for most outstanding player honors here at the College World Series with his two for two today, seven for 13 with six runs batted in. Gonna pitch him away this time. And the pitch stayed out toward the middle of the plate. Cassell chopped it foul. One and two on Michael. The transfer from Sacramento City College. A school that has sent many players to Miami over the years. Michael's in his first year at Miami. Important matchup now for Ship. The left-handed Cassell is hitting the ball well. And the one-two is lifted to left center and a long run for Mike Kerner. He is in to make the catch. Coming on to score the tying run, Gomez from third, it's 3-3. Three, three. So DeSalle has given in all three runs today for Miami. And we begin again in a tie ball game. DeSalle getting the ball out over the plate that he wanted, hitting it to left center, Win knocks it down. Does a good job of executing, getting the ball for a sacrifice fly. He's in his own today. He's been the key player for Miami so far. Rivero is still at first, now with two down. And the batter is T.R. Marcinczyk. He waits as Rivero drew a throw. He's stolen seven bases this year. Marcinczyk has struck out twice, went down swinging in the first. And looking in the fourth. TR looking very uncomfortable to play today. Pretty close play that time on a quick move by Ship. Let's take a look. A little stagger step throws over. He's back in there. The one hopper slowed the throw. We almost got him. See one hopper does a good job of scooping it. Eee. Looked pretty close right there. Indeed it did. Time requested by Marcinczyk. Granted by the home plate umpire. Scott Graham. Chip knowing that Miami will run in this situation to get the runner in scoring position. Has to keep him close. Marcinczyk takes a strike. How about his path to Miami? Marcinczyk started his collegiate career at Florida State. Didn't work out there for him. He went to junior college at Florida Community College in Jacksonville. Now he's at Miami. And they went back to play at Dick Hauser Stadium in Tallahassee this year. The Florida State fans were chanting, traitor, traitor. He's toured, PR Marcinczyk. He's toured the state pretty well. <laughs> Covered a lot of Florida in his collegiate days. That's a, Quite a rivalry in all sports, particularly in football, but also in baseball. And that is really going from one distinct side to the other. When you go from Florida State to Miami, as Marcinczyk did. He's from Plainville, Connecticut. The senior. Edward Stanley Marcinczyk III. I asked him, how do you get TR out of Edward Stanley? He said, well, it's from the third. TR comes from being Edward Stanley III. for Marcinczyk today. And first and second with two down. Now the go-ahead run is in scoring position. 
And Marcinczyk had a solid College World Series. This is his fifth hit in four games. As they say, all you have to do is keep swinging. Something may happen, and he does. It's the big hopper. It really takes off when it hits the dirt in the hole with overspin. It just gets by him. A big hop. Couldn't get up for it. And we'll have bullpen action in a moment for LSU as Ship has now given up nine hits over four and two-thirds innings. Brett Laxton is going to start warming up. Laxton, a big game pitcher for LSU. It's the championship game in 1993 against Wichita State. He's come back from injuries and pitched well in this College World Series. One to left, a late start by the left fielder. Cooley hits a diving catch, then lost it. It's a hit. No catch, it's a hit. One run is in. Here comes the second. He scores. And it's 5 3 Miami. Cooley arguing that he had it long enough to be a catch. Mike Bianco, who was ordinarily the third base coach, had gone running down to the bullpen to watch the pitchers warm up, and he came running out of the bullpen to argue. I think what he's gesturing is that the left field line umpire, Kevin Gilmore, first signaled out, and that if he signaled out, that meant he judged that this was a catch long enough. He didn't lose it till he hit the ground. Watch the ball in the glove. See, you've got to take the ball out of the glove with your hand. What happens is the umpire stayed right with this. He caught it, and then it bounced out of his glove when he hit the ground. This is a good call by the umpire. Let's watch it again. He tracks it all the way. He misplayed the ball off the bat, recovered, made a good catch, but once he hit the ground, it came out. You've got to take the ball out of the mitt. Big play for Miami. This could be a pivotal play in this game. Watch the ball just come out. He's frustrated. He got a late jump on it, and that's what made it such a tough play with Cora slap hitter up there. He's never hit a home run with the wind blowing in from left. Cooley was playing shallow and seemed surprised that Cora hit it as deep as he did. It's a triple for Cora. Two runs batted in. And the lead again for Miami at 5-3. to three. Skip Bertman came out to argue the point. Not all that animatedly. Well, he went out there more for his team than he did for the play itself. He knows that you have to take the ball out of your mitt in a play like that when you dive for a ball. He wants to battle for his team. Show his team that he's out there for them. With Cora's two for three now, that means all nine starters for Miami have a season average of better than 300. Rick Sagisi, the batter. We've had all kinds of plays in this College World Series National Championship game. We're only in the top of the fifth. Sagisi has singled the left and bounced to first. Hits the ball hard. That's out of play to the left. Chip can't afford to make a mistake now with LSU only two down. A mistake now to Sagisi, who's got power, could open up the game. Chip starting to throw a lot of pitches. You wonder whether the pressure and the pitches are catching up with him. DC sends it out of play to the left. He's a young man who's endured terrible tragedy in his life. His father helped coach his high school team in Naples, Florida, and one day was pitching batting practice to one of Rick's teammates when Mr. Sagisi was hit in the head by a line drive, never regained consciousness, died from an aneurysm the next day. Bounce down to first, tough play. And Sagisi's out at first, well done. Furnace to shift to end the inning. Quite an inning it was. Cooley almost made the great catch. Instead, it's a triple, and the LSU fans move 5-3 Miami. You're watching a replay of... Bottom of the night is upcoming. Does LSU have one more comeback left? We'll find out after this. Miami with a run in the top of the ninth has taken an 8-7 to seven lead in this national championship game to the bottom of the ninth. And now Jim Morris looks for defense as he brings Tris Moore into the ball game. An excellent defensive outfielder. He's in right. 
And Eddie Rivero has shifted from right field over the left. Michael DeSalle is out of the ballgame. This is a change Miami has made many times during the year with the lead. And the man of the hour is Alex Cora. His third hit of the ballgame knocked in the run that made it 8-7. to seven. Gave Cora his third RBI of the ballgame. Marcinczyk with a key hit as well. The double with two outs that started that brief uprising. And you have to feel for Patrick Coogan. He pitched very well in relief. Three in the third innings. Only having allowed one run. But that one run is the difference in the ballgame. And Skip Bertman needs one more big inning out of his team. Kane's ready to celebrate. But also... They understand what a tenuous lead this is against the team like the Tigers, who have scored two runs in each of the last two innings. Brad Wilson, 0 for 4, struck out three times today. He's 1 for 16 in the College World Series, but that will make up for all of those periods of failure. Down the line, and he's going to try for two. Rivero's throw, not in time, and he did not leave the bag. It's a double. Wilson has been struggling, now steps up and hits this ball just inside the line. Let's watch him. He's going to inside out it. And he's going to be taken off. He says, I'm going for two. He's pumping hard. Let's take a look at the tag. Let's see what happens. Does he come off the bag? Umpire says no. A very well umpired game. Tom McKinney at perfect position. Now Justin Bowles, the senior from Lake Jackson, Texas. Chance to win the College World Series with one swing. Bowles today, two for four. Hits in each of his last two at bats. A double to left center in the sixth. A single to left center in the eighth. Even with the two hits to left center, they play him around to the right side of the diamond. They play him to pull. He turned to punt and pushed it foul. Bowles, the number seven hitter. Tim Lanier is on deck. John, I don't think any of us thought that LSU would go down quietly. This is a great tradition. They never give up. Their winners haven't played that well throughout the College World Series and still won three games. Steve, you're surprised by the bunt. I mean, this is a big ball team. Obviously, you, you have to stay alive in the national championship game. You absolutely need to get this run in. But you have a left-handed pole hitter ordinarily up there in bowls. You already have the run in scoring position. Well, I think this is the way Skip Bergman plays the game. He wants to get the runner over, then you load up the bases, and a lot of things can happen then. See if he stays with the bunt. He does not. The ball low. I mentioned earlier, they'd only sacrificed 19 times the whole year coming into this ball game. What Skip does is he'll let him take one shot at it, and if they don't execute, then he'll say to himself, okay, I've got the infield in, there's a big hole on the right side. And a shot at that. Bowles is a home run threat, has 22. Second in the SEC this year. That's a ball down to first. Great stop by Marcinczyk. But it gets the runner to third. The ground ball to first. Tying run at third with one out. And an outstanding play by Marcinczyk to keep the winning runoff base for LSU. Now this is a ball that's down. Bowles, who has good back control, hits it hard and... TR makes a great stop. Look at that stop by that first baseman. They're going to bring the infield in. They're playing to win the championship right here. This is risky. They increase Lanier's percentage of getting a hit, and allowing the winning run to reach base. All that runner third can do is tie with the pitch that gets by Lanier and by the catcher Gargiulo, but not far enough for the runner to come in from third. And it has been deemed a strike. Take a look at this pitch being down at Bob. Third ball that ricochets off him. The runner, Wilson, obviously was blocked out. Didn't want to take a chance. I think that's a smart play. How about the infield in? Are you surprised? No. No, I think Miami, being the visiting team, has to cut off this run. LSU has been coming back and back and back. In the dirt. Blocked by Gargiulo. A ball and a strike. Lanier, the team captain, up in another key spot. He 
with the tying run at third and one out of the ninth inning. Lanier today has walked twice and singled one for two. He has scored twice, including last inning. Time call. Morrison has pitched two and two-thirds innings of relief now. We talked about Lanier and how he's come through throughout this whole college World Series. About how much of a leader is, how he wants to be up in crucial situations. Side and low, two balls and a strike. And Warren Morris is on deck. Didn't mean to throw it there. Breaking ball that kind of hung over the inside corner. But it's a strike to even the count of two and two with one out, a runner at third, 8-7 Miami in the bottom of the ninth. Robbie Morrison, the freshman. The 2-2 pitch, fastball just outside, and Morrison barked in the direction of home plate as that call didn't go his way. Tough pitch to take by Lanier. That ball seems to be on the outside corner. He tries to frame it back. Tough pitch to take. Morrison got the close call on the previous pitch. Didn't get it on the 2-2. Now a full count. The payoff to Lanier. He struck him out. This is going to be a great curveball in a crucial situation. Morrison comes back with the best curve of the day and fans Lanier. Watch Lanier track it. He just can't go down and get it. Here it is again. What a great curveball. Now Warren Morris. Is that finish? That's the first home run of the season for Warren Morris in 76 at bats. He's the young man who had hand surgery in April and was back a month later. And here's why he made every effort to come back. The inspirational leader of this Tiger team takes a good curveball and hooks it into the bleachers in right field. A great hitter rises to the occasion to win the national championship. He went down and got it. Hands and eyes all in synchronization. He knows it's gone. The junior from Alexandria, Louisiana, has given the Tigers their third national title. So there you have it, the LSU Tigers' third national championship in the 90s. Skip Bertman has called it his greatest moment. And football legend Billy Cannon says Morris' home run, the single greatest play in LSU sports history. 
surpassing his Heisman Trophy winning Halloween night punt return. I'm Steve Schneider. Glad you could join us. We now join CBS Sports in progress.